All right, yo, what's going on, guys? My name is Silent, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Detroit Become Human. Now, this is what I was talking about in one of the previous episodes. If you missed the previous episode, you guys know where to find the links. Uh, this is what I was talking about in a previous episode where Chloe here at the start menu will ask you certain questions. So right here, she's asking me if I want to be a part of a, a conduction survey uh, for, that Great. is through Let's CyberLife. Start. Would you consider having a relationship with an android that looks like a human? I mean, I guess it kind of depends on what kind of relationship we're talking about. If we're talking about, like, do I want to marry that android and then, like, have, like, android children if it can conceive, then probably not. I think I would still go with human companionship. If we're just talking about fucking, though, absolutely. Absolutely. I would fucking destroy an android in the bedroom. Do you think that technology could become a threat to mankind? I think mankind is the biggest threat to mankind. So I guess it just kind of depends on what kind of technology mankind creates to destroy itself. I don't think inherently technology can rise up. You know, like how they make like an all learning AI and then it learns to, you know, basically revolt against its creators. I don't think that that sort of stuff would happen. I, what I do think would happen is that like an Axis power or an underdog or something like that in terms of like a war would create a really, really powerful AI that could just completely decimate just leagues and leagues of troops and stuff like that in an instant through like a series of calculations and stuff like that. So in that terms, yes, but I don't think that it would be like a Terminator Rise of the Machines kind of thing. But I'm still going to choose yes, just because technically that does still t fall under the question, so... If you had to live on a deserted island and could only bring one object, what would it be? One object. See, now this is a difficult one because I definitely wouldn't bring a pen and paper or a cell phone or a book. I know a lot of people would probably choose the cell phone so that way they could like maybe eventually get a signal and call for help. But it said if you lived on a deserted island, it doesn't say that you're stranded there. See, you got to pay attention to that. So like I'm just living there, right? So I mean, I would probably bring a console because if I'm going to live there, I need to have something to fucking entertain me. But also an instrument would also be nice. But my thing is, is like if your instrument has to have like some sort of upkeep to it like guitar for example if you break a string do you have an extra string do you have multiple strings uh with like a clarinet do you have multiple reeds that you can replace to it and stuff like that um so i'm gonna say a console because i'm a do gamer you consider yourself dependent on technology oh well, i did just choose a console <laughs> that's my fucking my stranded on an island uh, you know, suggestions. So probably, I wouldn't say I'm dependent on technology, but I would really hate life without it. So I'm going to say yes. What I, I could definitely live without technology. But the fact that we have technology and it makes life so much easier, if they took it away, like today, fuck, I would hate that. Oh my God. Everything would suck. What technology do you most anticipate? Androids, flying cars, space tourism, or brain connected devices? Honestly, I think I anticipate androids because androids, I think, would be really cool to just see in everyday life. I mean, like, the big thing with them stealing jobs and stuff like that would definitely be sort of like in this game. How I could see that would be like a moral dilemma. But I don't know. I don't care about flying cars, okay? Like, nope, that's not a good idea. It was never a good idea from the start. People can barely drive cars on the road on four fucking wheels, okay? People don't need to have that shit aviated, period. There, people are nowhere near smart enough to be able to fucking aviate a vehicle if they can barely control it on the ground. Um, Brain-connected devices I've never really cared too much about. Like, I know Elon is really close to having, like, the neural link stuff up and ready to go, but I just don't... I don't see the attraction for it. Space tourism is really cool. I think that would also be really cool, which another thing Elon is really close to. Elon basically is just the future. Elon is our future. All hail Elon. But I think androids. Do you believe in God? 
Uh, it's pers It's just a personal thing. If you do, cool. If you don't, sweet. Uh, just personally, I don't. Would you let an android take care of your children? Uh, as long as there was measures in place to ensure that, like, it wouldn't hurt them, sure. Like, I mean, because I'm thinking of it in, like, the sort of iRobot three laws sort of thing. So, like, an android can never harm a human. An android cannot not listen to a human's command, you know, uh... Under no circumstance can an android defend itself or something like that. I forget what the laws are. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie, but as long as there's like that sort of stuff in place, then yeah, sure. How much time per day would you say you spend on an electronic device? Uh, probably more than four hours. If you needed emergency surgery, I would say on average would you probably agree to be six hours. By a machine? Uh, would you agree to be operated on by a machine? If I needed emergency surgery, that nine times out of ten, just like this question, I uh, I probably wouldn't even be like coherent in order to answer the question. You'd ask me while I'm bleeding profusely, and it'd be like, "Hey, sir, I know you're about to, you know, literally pass away." But I just have a quick question. If you could just sign this document right here with your last dying breath that states that you can be operated on by this machine, then we might have a chance to save your life. Then, I mean, I, if, if I could get the fucking signature out, maybe. Otherwise, I think I'd still just die. Do you think one day machines could develop consciousness? Not in the same concept as our consciousness no i don't think so because technically see what like what a lot of people get confused with consciousness is that it lives just because you have a conscience doesn't necessarily mean that you are alive so like a consciousness from my perspective is that you understand what life and death is but your concept of death doesn't isn't always the same as something else's perception of what their consciousness is it's stupid i i can understand it in my head trying to explain it in english words just doesn't just doesn't work but i no i don't think that they could ever develop full consciousness i think that they could get pretty pretty close and they could understand that they could be shut down and never reactivated but that doesn't necessarily register to them that that equals basically a death and that they're just gone and also another thing for like that you can think of for machines is that they don't really have death, if you think about it. Because, like, with Chloe here, for example, she's a machine. If you had a database and you uploaded all of her memories, all of her experiences, all of, like, her sights that she's seen throughout her lifetime, all of that stuff, if you uploaded all of her consciousness into a database and then just uploaded that into another Chloe, then she's never died in the first place, right? So... It's really more of like, they, they really can't even die in that scenario. In that scenario, they are immortal. So, if you're looking at consciousness as a life and death thing, then technically they can't even die. So they can't have a consciousness. I don't know. Anyway, let's look at our results. Would you consider having a relationship with an android that looks like human? 61% said yes, naturally, because we're all horny bastards. Do you think that technology could become a threat to mankind? The world's answers were 68% yes, which included mine. Um, if you had to live on a deserted island, let's see. 29 said an instrument, which makes sense. 10% said a console. Damn, nobody who plays this game is an actual gamer, and that makes me extremely upset. You people are phonies. Do you consider yourself dependent on technology? Of course, you know, literally three quarters of the world said yes. So what technology do you most anticipate? Uh, that was actually pretty split between brain-connected devices and androids, but uh, yeah, it's pretty much between those two. I'm surprised space tourism wasn't a lot higher. I guess the technology is just not close enough in order for people to really think that space tourism could happen. Plus, like, once you go to space once, that's kind of it. 
You know what I mean? Like, unless you can just go to Mars and you can go to Jupiter and stuff like that, you can go to other planets and, like, kind of, like, colonize, then there's not really a point in going to space. Like, ooh, cool, I get to go to the moon. Been there, done that. Don't need to go back. And it's, we're nowhere near being able to go light years away, so, you know, and, you know, have, being able to come back in a timely manner, so. There's not really any point to it currently. Uh, so this one was, it's pretty, it's almost down the middle. If the don't know question was there, it would definitely be down the middle. Because if you added the 18% to the 37%, would you let an android take care of your children? 50%, so literally half. Half said yes, half said they didn't know. How much time per day do you spend on an electronic device? 62% said more. Nice, nice. If you need emergency surgery, 71% said yes. Wow, that's actually a lot higher than I thought. Do you think one day machines could develop consciousness? 66% said yes. You people are just blinded by Hollywood. That is crazy. But yeah, that was just something kind of really like cool that I knew that Chloe would do eventually was ask that little survey thing. So I, I wanted it to be a part of our playthrough just because it is still technically part of the game also. As far as I know, it doesn't change anything that happens in you? your game, but I'm here to see Luke's it's just something ends. cool. Do you have authorization? Yes. Yes. Oh, Connor, blink, blink, blink. Lieutenant Anderson hasn't arrived yet, but you can wait at his desk. I feel like I've seen that in like a an animated show or an anime or something like that where they'll blink really fast and they're a robot and it makes like a shutter sound or a flutter noise. Okay. I'm having like flashbacks to that wherever I've seen that before. Yeah, so this is where we left off in the last episode because we're about to see Todd right here, so. There's Todd. Again. Hey, Todd. Fuck you, Todd. Piece of shit, Todd. So, Lieutenant Anderson's desk has been found. Excuse me. Do you know what time Lieutenant Anderson usually arrives? Depends on where he was the night before. <laughs> if we're lucky, we'll see him before noon. Thanks. Before noon? What time is it? You and you, come with me. Well, somebody just got in trouble. That girl had such a demanding voice. You and you, come with me. <laughs> Look, I like how just reserved we're sitting in that chair. We refuse to put our arms on the armrests. Oh, and this, this time... Me and Connor have the same hairstyle. So I actually went to work today, so my hair is kind of fucked up. Let's see. Let me turn the camera. Because the camera... You literally cannot spin the camera like a full degree, like 360 degree around, unless you do that uh, little photo lock thing so you can scan. Knights of the Black Death. I actually remembered that. That's crazy. Let's call. Call Hank Anderson. Hi, this is Hank. You have to use an actual phone to make a call? If that's what turns you on, but don't expect me to call back. Beep. Whatever. Lieutenant Anderson, this is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. It's almost noon, and I'm waiting for you. Why do you have to use a phone? Marcus didn't have to use a phone. He just called the police. Like, Marcus called the police for Carl just standing there with his mind. So why did Connor have to do that? Maybe Connor just doesn't have his number and he had to use that phone. I don't know. Anti-Android slogans. Use your brain, not your Android. Android free space. Well, it's not shaping up too good for us on Lieutenant Anderson's side there, Connor. Seems like he doesn't very much enjoy our company very much which we already knew he likes to play hardball matches jimmy's bar dog hair canine hair saint bernard dog sumo his name is sumo donuts damn sounds good right now not gonna lie Japanese maple. I want one of those. 
coffee cup. Cold coffee. Traces of caffeine. Cold coffee. Oof. That sounds good, too. Specifically cold coffee, though, because I much prefer, like, iced coffee over hot coffee. Hot take, I know. Red Ice Task Force 2027. Multi-department unit responsible for the Red Ice Network Dismantle of 2028. Okay. Detroit police dismantle a network of red ice dealers. More than 50 arrests throughout the country, Detroit's finest has dealt a massive blow to the city's growing red ice epidemic, with a number of high-profile dealers and suppliers now behind bars and narcotics seized with a street value of $500,000. Detective Hank Anderson, a young but hugely talented detective, is said to have been instrumental in the operation which took months of planning. The DA described the work of Detective Anderson and his colleagues as model investigative police work. Yeah, so Detective Anderson, Mr. Anderson here, used to be quite the uh, model applicant in terms of a police officer. There he is. It's good to see you again, Lieutenant. Oh, Jesus. Hank! In my office. Also, his office is very iRobot. <laughs> this, his whole office and his character model have to be a reference to iRobot. There's no way it's not. Because the guy in iRobot had an exact same office as this. It was a glass box office right in smack dab center. I've got of 10 the, cases uh, involving androids on my desk every day. Of the actual police department? We've always had isolated incidents. Old ladies losing their android maids and that kind of crap. But now, we're getting reports of assaults and even homicide, like that guy last night. This isn't just Cyberlife's problem anymore. It's now a criminal investigation, and we've got to deal with it before the shit hits the fan. I want you to investigate these cases and see if there's any link. Why me? Why do I gotta be the one to deal with this shit? I love how he's immediately pissed. I am the least qualified cop in the country to handle this case. I know jack shit about androids, Jeffrey. I can barely change the settings on my own phone. Everybody's overloaded. I think you're perfectly qualified for this type of investigation. Bullshit! The truth is, nobody wants to investigate these fucking androids, and you let me hold in the bag. Cyberlife sent over this android to help with the investigation. It's a state-of-the-art prototype. It'll act as your partner. No fucking way! I don't need a partner, and certainly not this plastic prick. Plastic Hank, prick. You are seriously starting to piss me off. You are a police lieutenant. You are supposed to do what I say and shut your goddamn mouth. You know what my goddamn mouth has to say to you? Okay. Huh? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, say it, I'll Hank. Like I didn't hear he won't, it. pussy. So I don't have to add any more pages to your disciplinary folder, cause it already looks like a fucking novel. This conversation is over. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jesus Christ, why are you doing this to me? You know how much I hate these fucking things. Why are you doing this to me? Listen, I've had just about enough of your bitch. Either you do your job or you hand in your badge. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got work to do. <laughs> what noise is that, Hank? Come on. <sighs> Anderson positive file. I would like to start reviewing the case files. Can you tell me where I talk to Hank? Close the door on your way out. Have a nice day, Captain. Captain Dickweed. You have to add that in. Always. There's... There's Lieutenant Dickweed, which is the dude from the very start of the game, and then there's Captain Dickweed, which is him. Check on Hank. What if I don't want to check on Hank right now? What if I... What if I want to let Hank sulk? Detroit Today, The Three Laws of Robotic Parenting. Yeah, see, so it, it has to be. This whole fucking room has to be in a reference to iRobot. The Three Laws of Robotics right there from iRobot. The fucking glass plate, the glass palace that his office is in. Fucking reference to iRobot. I'm telling you, I'm not going crazy. I might actually be a little crazy, but I'm just saying there's too much of this shit's lining up. Family life has never been easier. When Cyberlife initially released their child range, the public was skeptical of purchasing a family. Now the collection is one of Cyberlife's best sellers, but is this really a surprise? Customizable, removable LED, no hunger, no expensive health, child care, no new clothes, and not to mention no smelly diapers. The perfect child is just one click away. All it needs, all its needs can be suspended 
at the touch of a button. It's child's play. Literally. It's the stress-free solution for career-oriented parents, those struggling to have their own children, or miss having a youngster at home. That's pretty cool. That's nice. Just that way, like... I don't know. It kind of makes it sort of seem like, uh... They have that option to have, like, an android kid is, like, the same alternative to having a dog. It's like, oh, you're lonely? Just buy yourself a kid. That's not actually a kid. Fuck, look at that. Our friend, the plastic detective, is back in town. Congratulations on last night. Very impressive. Actually, me and this dude have more of a similar hairstyle than Connor does. Greet, introduce, ignore. Uh, we'll greet. Hello, Detective Reed. Ever seen an android like you before? Model like All of them. RK-800. You can fucking see it on my shirt, dumbass. A prototype. Can android you not detective. read? So machine's gonna replace us all. Is that it? Oh. Hey, you specifically. Bring me a coffee, dipshit. I like how we blinked yeah, at him and we're just like... Uh, refuse. I'm sorry, but I only take orders from Lieutenant Anderson. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a funny scene. Even Connor was shaking his head. He looked at the order, other cop and just went... obey. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> Stay out of my way. It was just like, it was Next so time, subtle, too. He fucking, get off so he looked easy. just as excited as the other guy. It was just fucking, he looked right over at her. Just so subtly, just shook his head. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Also, that scene also never makes sense to me. There's no reason for Connor to fall Several to his knee after being punched by somebody. Like, I can understand that, like, he would like push himself over or whatever, but there's no reason for him to fall to his knee that dramatically. This case of an android being authorized to play an active role in criminal investigations. Oh, they're talking about me. We contacted CyberLife for comment, but no one was available to answer our questions. CyberLife Android assisting DPD. The first book written by an artificial intelligence has just been published, and to call it a success would be an understatement. I forget what I was saying. Oh, yeah. So, like, you know, because Connor doesn't feel pain. So, like, the shock of him being punched should, yeah, he should lean over and, like, sort of, like, lean over the punch. But to fall uh, to the ground like he was winded, like, almost as if it knocked the wind out of him, as if he breathes, it doesn't really make any sense. It kind of breaks the illusion there that he's an android. Oh, oh, I'm doing the stuff with the quarter. I just... I, I'm a, I'm a fucking magician. I, first of all, I made that quarter materialize out of nothing, and then I spun it around in my hand a little bit, and then made it dematerialize. Perhaps I'm more than just an android. Understanding, pragmatic, constructive. <sighs> constructive. It's an honor to be working with you, Lieutenant. I'm sure we'll make a great team. <laughs> a cute little smile. Partners, positive. Uh, partners. Now that we're partners, it would be great to get to know each other better. Desk positive. Uh, desk. Is there a desk anywhere I could use? No one's using that one. Oh, how convenient. The desk right across from yours, Hanky Poo. God, we're going to be so good. We're going to be like such best friends now that I have a desk right next to yours, Hank. I can't wait to get on all your nerves. <laughs> Dog, basketball, music, anti-androids. So, I'm going to cheat at this a little bit because I know that there's two answers, or there's two questions that you can choose, which this doesn't affect anything anyways. Uh, there's two questions that you can choose that give you negative influence on him, and there's two questions that you can choose that give you positive influence. And I'm going to cheat and do the only answers that give you the positive influence. You have a dog, right? How do you know that? The dog I was at your house chair. while you were sleeping the other night. I like dogs. What's your dog's name? I mean, yeah, What's the the, the hairs on your chair. Sumo. A 
call him Sumo. Goddamn right you do. But yeah, so even if you do get the answers that give you like a negative influence on him, it doesn't actually do anything. Or even if you don't get the ones that give him a, ne a negative influence, literally it makes no difference to the beginning and middle or any sort of situation that you can have with Hank from this scenario. So I'm just going to choose the ones that he actually likes. Do you listen to Knights of the Black Death? Just for extra really bonus like points. Music. It's full of energy. You listen to heavy metal? Well, I don't really listen to music as such, but I'd like to. Smart move, Connor. Fowler. Have you known Captain Fowler for long? Yeah, too long. Uh, let's do hours. I was wondering, do you always arrive at the Oh, I shouldn't have chose that. I arrive when I arrive. I think that one gives me negative. Stop busting my balls, okay? Never mind. Okay, fuck me. If you Start have any working. files on deviants, I'd like to take a look at this. Terminal's on your desk. Knock yourself out. Right. <laughs> His little nod, like, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so right here we can go through all of the case files that's been uh, filed against Deviants. So this dude has a missing android. Uh, that one, I think, assaulted somebody. Yeah, lunged at him and une unexpectedly and attempted to strangle the man. This one just trashed the house, then left. This one right here is kind of special because she comes into play later. So just, if you want to read this, you can read it. I would advise you do because the uh, specifically the term sex android right there is what kind of comes back into play later. Uh, this one is Leo Manfred. Was found unconfish, con unconfish? What the fuck is that word? Leo Manfred was found unconscious in the home of his father, Carl Manfred. So this is a, this is the case file for Marcus, which is why it's destroyed, shockingly, because, well, not the case file, but the android was reported as destroyed because, obviously, as we saw in the last episode, Marcus was indeed in the graveyard. And then there's Kara. So this was, you know, Todd's little case file. 243 files. First dates back nine months. It all started in Detroit and quickly spread across the country. An AX-400 is reported to have assaulted a man last night. That could be a good starting point for our investigation. Once again, talking about Kara there. Why we get so close to him? Why are we standing over him like that? Professional, aggressive, direct, understanding. Let's do professional. I know you didn't ask for this investigation, Lieutenant, but I'm sure you're a professional. Why don't you go fuck yourself? Well, Hank, if I was equipped with the parts, I probably would. Determined, resign the mission, threatened. Uh, determined. Fuck. I've been assigned this mission, Lieutenant. I didn't come here to wait until you feel like working. Give it to him, Mr. Krabs. You won't, pussy boy. Oh, okay. Asshole. Maybe he will. If it was up to me, I'd throw the lot of you in a dumpster and set a match to it. So stop pissing me off. But things are going to get nasty. Just tickle his balls, Lieutenant? Connor. He'll let you go. Sorry to disturb you. I have some information <laughs> on the AX-400 that attacked the guy last night. Um, <laughs> it's been seen in the Raven. I'm fucking stupid. I'm on it. Got to straighten that tie. Yeah, so that outcome happens regardless. I think there is one possible directive there that you can take that leads to Hank not pushing you against the wall. I don't know what the other outcome is, though. Because it says Hank is mad right there, and then it branches off into two separate alternative 
like endings to that scenario. So Hank got a lead, which is the one where he pushes you against the wall. I don't know if there, like, what happens in the event that he doesn't push you against the wall, despite the fact that you still have to make him mad in that scenario. I don't know. I guess maybe he just rocks you and just straight up fucking punches you. I really don't know. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that outcome before. Like, the opposite outcome. I've seen, as far as I know, that has to happen for him to push you up against the wall like that. So we're back with Kara and Alice. We spent the night in the car. In the car. Change appearance, cut hair. Absolutely. See, this is my favorite part for Kara's story. Well, not my favorite part for Kara's story, but um, this is like one of my favorite parts for Kara's story because we're about to make Kara look hot. Maybe this is why it was my favorite because you can get her the jacket and the jacket really completes her look once you give her her haircut. Check neighborhood. Yeah, see, so there's a crowbar there, which that'll come in handy in a second. I have to continue to look around. Police patrolling the area. The face she made. <laughs> okay, so... Let me check this trunk, because I believe if we try to open the trunk, that gives us the cue for us to be able to grab the crowbar. Almost. Almost strong enough, but not quite there. Yeah, so now we can grab the crowbar. Yes. Oh my god. It like, I keep getting stuck on the bumper right there. I don't think that would work that way. That would take so much more than just one quick little push to open up that trunk. That's, without a doubt, that's like a four or five hour endeavor trying to open a trunk with a crowbar. Yeah! Don't worry, if you don't like the jacket right now, it'll grow on you once we get our hair cut. Which is right over here, because thankfully, there's a pair of hair shears. Just stuck in a tire for no reason. Cut. So we also get to choose our hair color. Look at that! Oh, she looks so good. Okay, so my favorite to go for in terms of our hair color is white. Because I think she just looks so pretty with white hair. I love the white hair. I love like how her eyes are like that silvery blue and it matches with the white of her hair. Um, black is also really good also. So I may go with black, but I don't know, just white really, white really does it for me. So I'm gonna go with white. Oh, that was a cool little animation. Once again, thankfully you don't feel pain. So that doesn't usually hurt too bad at all. And now we're human. Aside from the fact that we look exactly the same as every other AX400 model. And so this is the android that I showed you guys in the last episode. Where they literally set him on fire for some reason. So we literally slept next to a dead android. To a dead body, pretty much. So let's wake up Alice. Wakey, wakey, it's time for school! Wow, we were really gentle. Alice. Wake up, Alice. So 
it wasn't a nightmare. Sadly, no. <laughs> no, it wasn't a nightmare. How do you feel? I've had those moments before. I'm cold. Where you just have such a fucked up night that like you go what home and then you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning and you're like, damn, that, Android we saw that really actually happened. That wasn't a dream. He gave me an address. He said we could get help there. The train passes just on the other side of the road. The station can't be far. You feel okay to walk a little? Let's go then. Why did you blink like that, Alice? She blinks so slowly. You're pretty like that. Thank you, Alice. You really look like a human now. Sorry, my nose is running. I don't know what it is, but like legitimately my nose never runs. I haven't sniffled at all today until I started to record. And then all of a sudden my nose just decides that, yeah, it's just going to pour everywhere all the time, 24 fucking 7. Police are on our trail. All right. That's all for now. Ready to go. You've got officers sweeping the neighborhood in case anybody saw anything. Okay, well, let me know if they turn anything up. What are you going to do with that? Don't call me a that. I have no idea. My name is Connor. The android sent by Cyberlife. It took the first bus that came along and stayed at the end of the line. Its decision wasn't planned. It was driven by fear. Androids don't feel fear. Deviants do. They get overwhelmed Emulated by their fear. emotions and make irrational decisions. All right, well, that still doesn't tell us where it went. It didn't have a plan. And it had nowhere to go. Maybe it didn't go far. Perhaps. Maybe. Yeah, so... This is a little bit of conflict of interest here, because, like, you want what's best for Connor, which technically what's best for Connor is for him to catch all the deviants. Technically, by what his story is driven for, his objective is to catch deviants. Which Kara is. So, te really, if we liked Connor more, we should kind of get her caught on purpose, which obviously we're not going to do. But, that is technically how it would go. Yeah, yeah. So, all we have to do is just avoid being detected by all the police officers scouting the area. And we should be able to make it to the train station just fine. Fuck. I was still holding the button. Hey, 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 whoa. Let me walk over here. This is red. I don't know why it allowed me to walk. Isn't that supposed to be green in order for me to walk over it? How do you get to 99 level of suspicion? And that they're, they just, they just hinge on that 1% that they're not sure. Like I've never been 99% sure of something and then was just like, ah, nah, it's all right, fuck it. I'm just going crazy. Okay, I think we made it. It won't get far. We'll find it sooner or later. Let's go. Yeah, so technically right here, Connor has failed his first mission. So, it's a little bit of conflict of interest there. Because obviously you don't want Kara to get caught, but you also don't want Connor to fail his mission or fail his objective. So 
you have to choose the better of the two instances though so it's like one android over two so i prefer kara story not end right there are you okay Aww. Man, that's probably the first, like, hug that Kara's ever gotten. Yeah, so you can see that there's a couple of different outcomes to... <laughs> there's, a, there's a good bit to that portion there. So from the start... It, it depends heavily on where you've decided to sleep for the night. So I think this right here is the motel, the big multi-branch scenario. And then the one in the middle is, or no, the big multi-branch scenario here is if you choose to stay in the abandoned house with, I forget his name now, Ralph, with Ralph. So if you stay in the house with Ralph, that is what that leads into. But the middle one kind of branches back into this scenario. So pretty cool. Several sources report that That's loud. Life has provided Detroit police with a prototype detective android. Although police assistant androids have been Hey, it's Marcus. This would be the first case of an I'm surprised people don't think that you smell really bad. Because you just crawled out of uh, literally, like, what what are those places called? Like a landfill of trash and android parts, and then just grabbed a random coat that also had been rained on in that same trash place. You must smell awful, just absolutely putrid. Check the symbol. Okay. Yeah, so that android that grabbed us in the landfill gave us the key to find Jericho, which is basically like a, a getaway for rogue androids or deviant androids which is that little symbol right there. So you have to key up a bunch of these symbols and each time you find one of the symbols or a multiple of the symbols, it gives you a new location to go to to find the next set. So you have to be an android. You don't have to be. You could just be a really observant human and really curious and probably accidentally stumble upon it. But I mean, you'd have to be really fucking out there to just accidentally come across it like that. Get the fuck out of here. Connor, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, so right here, you can see where this... There's two symbols on this wall. So right there is one. And then on his belt, there's another one. But basically, that's designed by androids for only other androids to be able to figure out. It's sort of like an android-only puzzle. So that way, deviant androids can always come back, or can find their way back. Which is pretty cool. It's pretty smart. Which I, w I would expect, coming from androids. I mean... Right. So, that's one. And there's the other one. Then we're looking at a, a, a drawing, or a, not a drawing, but a, a, some graffiti art of a robot on a wall. Yeah, with the symbol above his head. Oh, there's three of them here, nice. Oh, the other one is in the stomach of this one. Then the other one is behind that pallet so we have to crawl in. Make sure nobody's looking. 
because everyone is going to care as to why you're crawling into the bottom of a fence right there. It's not like people see that every day. Well, probably not every day, but they'll just think you're a drug addict. It's okay. And if you get caught, you can always just play that role anyways. So one thing that's cool about Marcus, I don't know if I've explained it or not, but he's also a prototype, a state-of-the-art prototype. There's only one Marcus, just like there's only, technically, one Connor. Even though technically there's multiple Connors because he's funded by Cyberlife, but still. Marcus is not funded by Cyberlife. He is his own standalone model and was a gift to Carl Manfred by a very special person that we'll learn about later. There is no sound to us pulling this. We have footsteps, but this is the most quiet dumpster I've ever heard in my life. Or should I say the most quiet dumpster I've never heard? Clue updated. So there's one in between the, or right after the word sparkle on a wall. Now I'm not really sure what his prototype model is for. Cause that's never really explained. Like it, it, it says in his report that he is a prototype, but it doesn't really say what he's a prototype for. Like, you know, Connor is a prototype specifically to be the most advanced, technologically advanced, like detective android in a police force. So he's sort of like the test run for that. And if Connor is successful in his mission, then they'll make a lot more of him and continue to upgrade on him until he becomes basically like a, an absolute perfect machine and just replaces human detectives altogether. That's basically Connor's like whole job. That's what it boils down to anyways, but I don't know what Marcus's like ultimate goal is with him being a prototype because his only goal or his only task was to take care of Carl, which I've read into it. I saw a Reddit thread about it and I, from the Reddit thread, it said that Marcus was originally going to be a Connor model. But then I think at some point in production, they swapped it. And I don't mean in production of the game. I mean like in terms of production of the storyline. Uh, how do I explain it? So basically like Cyberlife in terms of production for the Connor model decided that Marcus wasn't a, a good fit for that style of Android or something like that. So they changed, they changed him. To Connor that's what I got from it I could be wrong about that and I'm just remembering it incorrectly but it explains as to why Marcus can do the pre-construction like what we're doing here and why he's so agile just like Connor can and is because that's not something that normal androids can do you'll never see Kara pre-construct something because she's just a standard model. So it's almost as if Marcus and Connor are the exact same model or were at one point the same model. So that's pretty cool to think about. I was hoping that like we would use our Android strength and just throw that fucking thing across the room for no reason. Because, like, sometimes it's shown that these androids are really strong, and then sometimes they're just, like, super weak for no reason. It's very inconsistent with how strong they are, because, like, at some points it's like, oh, they're a robot. They have hydraulic muscles. They can lift so much more than their normal weight or than a normal person. And then it's like, Oh, but they're also made out of plastic, so maybe they shouldn't be able to lift that much or take that much damage. Reach the boat. Very well.
Look at that upper body strength. Which it is cool that they found a way to make androids from a plastic composite instead of making them from metal. It's definitely smarter. Because, like, I can only imagine how much Marcus would actually weigh if he was made completely out of, like, steel or even aluminum. But being made out of a plastic composite, Marcus probably only weighs, like, 140 pounds maximum as a fully grown male. If we get to jump Assassin's Creed style, take the leap of faith. Just imagine if there wasn't water down here. You'd be fucked. I wonder if I drown if I choose not to grab the, the ladder. Also, I wonder how they solved the issue of water damaging androids. Or, like, damaging the components for an android. Because, like, if you submerge the android in water, it makes sense that, like, it wouldn't damage it immediately. I would imagine that if it opened its mouth and let the water in, or, like, tried to, quote-unquote, breathe underwater. I know they don't breathe, but you know what I mean. If they, like, sucked water into their body, I wonder if that would damage it. If that would, like, short some of its components. Or if there's a way that it can filter water away from its components. Yeah, but by the way, this is Jericho. Sorry, I got off on a tangent and forgot to sort of explain where we are. So this is Jericho. This is where the dude wanted us to go when he gave us that key. When he jump scared us. In the landfill. I'm, I swear to God, I just heard that person saying something. Cyberlife's fortune teller computer? Cyberlife has unveiled a new quantum supercomputer capable of exaflops. One billion billion operations per second. The equivalent of several human minds in a single machine. This computer was specifically designed to analyze vast data from various sources and generate predictions. Uh, well, I didn't think that there was going to be a period there, so. Philip Seymour, CyberLife's Director of Futurology. What a title. Philip's CyberLife's Director of Futurology. I wonder how much that pays. It's highly confident. We've been testing for a while, and the results are going to wow people. The computer will be used to calculate the probability of mass extinction events such as aggressive alien invasions or global climate disasters like meteors or super viruses. We need one of those in real life because clearly we're drawing the short end of the fucking stick right now. And that supercomputer needs to tell us what the probable chances are. Because either we're extremely lucky or extremely unlucky. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let me get let me get fake scared real fast. That actually kind of did scare me. I like. I involuntarily kind of like moved my arms in like a a little jump. Like I was trying to pull my controller away from the log as it fell. these noises, man. Everything is so fucking loud on this ship. Well. Loud noises. Ugh. Once again, thank God you don't feel pain.
You are a little bit stunned, and that makes sense, because you just fell like 20 feet. Ten of which was interrupted by your back. Welcome to Jericho. Hi, Daniel. It's not the same Daniel, obviously, but... I believe his name is Simon. That Daniel model. Meet people of Jericho. Fall off catwalk. Well, of course that has to happen. So, it's weird because it almost makes it seem like there is another scenario where you don't locate Jericho. Because it says explore abandoned office and then there's a secondary little branch right here that goes to another lock option. I wonder if there is an outcome where Marcus just never finds Jericho and then decides to do something different to make his own Jericho. That would be cool. Come on, Hank. You gotta look both ways, man. Reconcile with Lieutenant Anderson. Dormammu? I've come to Anderson. Hey, listen, I got a shit hot tip for you. A shit hot tip, that's it. Lickety split. Lickety split, you You wanna flood him? Last shit hot tip you gave me sent me back a week's wages, baby. Come on, this is different. It's a hundred percent guaranteed. You can't go wrong. Let me scan you, Pedro. You seem like a shady character. Abdar Pedro, born 01-25-2005. You know, that's kind of crazy. You can, like, technically, I'm older than that person. I was born in 2000. Criminal record, illegal gambling, and fraud. Well, who would have thought? Considering he's currently participating in illegal gambling with Lieutenant Anderson here. I wonder if he's the one who, like, arrested him the first time. Detroit food hygiene license. License expired. 05 20 2031 renewal refused 07 24 2031 i wonder why they were like refused the renewal i guess because they made a c a 60 on sanitation that's the worst sanitation rating i've ever seen in a restaurant which granted this is a, like a mobile restaurant but still gary Kays, born in 1988 criminal record resisting arrest and breach of hygiene regulations Imagine that. Hank doesn't care. He just cares that the food tastes good. Which I, I can't say that I blame him, honestly. Like, I could care less if you wash your hands and shit like that. Just as, if, the, if the food tastes good, I'm going to eat it. Like, I, some people are really grossed out by it, but, like, I, come on. It's fucking food. If you can't see the germs that are on it, it's not going right, to fucking I'm hurt in. you. Damn straight. What you don't know won't hurt hey, you, is what I'm trying to say. This. Granted, you could get, like salmonella or something like that but if that never happens then no no foul play what is your problem don't you ever do as you're told not usually you don't have to follow me around like a poodle i like dogs <laughs> apologize for behavior reconcile uh apologize i'm sorry for my behavior back at the police station i didn't mean to be unpleasant Oh, wow. You've even got a brown nose and apology program. I got them all, Hank. Everything, huh? I've got them all. There you go. Uh, let me scan that before you set that down, good sir. Yeah, appreciate it. I love how that kind of looks like a Chick-fil-A container. Like, tell me that that symbol on the side of the box doesn't look like a Chick-fil-A, uh, like, bag. Hamburger... Hamburger. Fifty-three percent water. That's fucking highway robbery right there. Half that burger, over half that burger is water. XL soda. Pineapple passion. I don't know, Hank. That just doesn't seem a pineapple flavored soda to go with a burger. I don't know, man. Uh, I just feel like that wouldn't taste good. I'll leave that thing here. Uh, not a chance. Coming from the guy who drinks everywhere. sweet tea with everything. Literally, hey. anytime I go to any restaurant, doesn't matter what the fuck I'm eating, always sweet tea. 
Gambi gambling cholesterol company. We'll do gambling first. This Pedro, he was proposing illegal gambling. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you made a bet. Yeah. Huh. Everybody has their the own little contains one point four side times hustles, the recommended Connor. daily intake of calories and twice the cholesterol level. You shouldn't eat that. Everybody's got to die of something. See, Hank gets it, man. Hank is just out here living. About Connor, Hank, and androids. Oh, what's that one locked option? Is there anything you'd like to know about me? Hell no. Well, yeah. Um, why do they make you look so goofy and give you that weird voice? Cyberlife androids are designed to work harmoniously with humans. Both my appearance and voice were specifically designed to facilitate my integration. Well, they fucked up. <laughs> Why you gotta be so mean, Hank? I'm trying to reconcile. Can I ask you a personal question, Lieutenant? Why do you hate androids so much? I have my reasons. I have my reasons. Maybe I should tell you what we know about deviants. You read my you mind. read my mind. Proceed. We believe that a mutation occurs in the software of some androids, which can lead to them emulating a human emotion. In English, please. They don't really feel emotions. They just get overwhelmed by irrational instructions, which can lead to unpredictable behavior. Or so you say. Emotions always screw everything up. The androids aren't as different from us as we thought. <laughs> you ever dealt with deviants before? This little girl a while back managed to save her. A few months back, a deviant was threatening to jump off the roof with the little girl. I managed to save her. So I guess you've done all your homework, right? Most of it. You know everything there is to know about me. Truth. I know you graduated top of your class. I can't remember what else he says. I know you graduated top of your class. You made a name for yourself in several cases and became the youngest lieutenant in Detroit. I also know you've received several disciplinary warnings in recent years and you spend a lot of time in bars. So what's your conclusion? You're a good officer. I think working with an officer with personal issues is an added challenge. But adapting to human unpredictability is one of my features. Ah, uh, the little wink. I fucking love it. I just got a report of a suspected deviant. You're melting my heart over away. here, Connor. You should go have a look. See, look at how sly Connor's acting now. Because now that he's actually spent car. time around another human, he's picking up on, like, human traits. He's slowly adapting his personality to fit in with Hank, which is how we're playing him. Hey, Connor. But uh, that little wink the right there, and then how he's sly and he's like, I was making a report we should go check Sunday. it out, or whatever. Well, do you plan on staying in the elevator? No, I'm coming. I think I'd rather stand in the elevator, honestly. If I stand here for too long, I'll start playing with my coin again. Hey, what do we know about this guy? Not much. Just that a neighbor reported that he heard strange noises coming from this floor. Uh, Nobody's supposed to be living here, but the neighbor said he saw a man hiding... Feathers. ...an LED under his cap. Oh, Christ. If we have to investigate every time somebody hears a strange noise, we're gonna need more cops. <laughs> Yeah, true. Hello? Housekeeping? Anybody home? Open up, Detroit police! Well, somebody's home. Stay behind me. Got it. Personally, Hank, I would throw Connor in there first. I'd give Connor the gun and then just let him just sweep the place. So I promise you, Connor can land a shot way quicker than you can. Plus, Connor can come back. Which, Hank doesn't know that currently, but, you know. You gonna go? Let's go! Damn, you're slow. Old man. What the fuck 
fuck is this? All the pigeons. Uh, Jesus, this place stinks. Yeah, so there's a neat little Easter egg with this game. I well, think it's it a like cheat code. Or I mean, it's gone. It was just like a game, uh, like a, a dev thing. Basically, the developers thought it would be funny to replace these pigeons with Connors, like little Connors. And it like, it, they act the same as the pigeons or whatever, but like Hank walking around all, all around all of these little Connors is really funny. I think there's a video of it on YouTube. Then it was, uh, I think it was actually posted by the developers. It's really funny. Let's take this. this is fresh air. LED bio component deactivated 1106 2038. Its LED is in the sink. Well, I should take that. That's evidence. It was an android. No human could live with all these fucking pigeons. More blue blood that we just tasted. Reported missing. More compulsive writing of RA9 and weird symbols too. This is the first time that we've seen these symbols mixed in with the compulsive Any writing. Idea what it means? RA9, written 2,471 times. Why would you Same count that? Same sign Ortiz's android wrote on the shower wall. Why are they obsessed with this sign? Looks like mazes or something. Obsessive compulsive writing. There's a chair. Analyze. Wooden stool. Recently disturbed. Traces of avian fecal matter. Who would have thought? Not with all the birds around. No way. They don't shit on the floor. Open marker pen. Still wet. Recently re re still wet. Used recently. Same. Color. Midnight mood. Black. That's how I like my coffee. Not really. I fucking hate black coffee. I can't... I don't understand how people drink black coffee. That is the most bitter shit in the world, and you people are freaks. I've said what I said, and I will not take it back. I do not care. Black coffee is the devil. You have to put at least creamer or something in it to sweeten it up, because it is just atrocious. All right, so basically he fell off the stool, hit this thing. That's what we heard when we knocked on the door. That was him falling over. Uh, what are we looking at? RT, military jacket, second hand. RT, probably initials. It is, and this guy's name Rupert, I think. That's something your mom. Finger marks, recent traces of avian fecal matter. No way. Not in here. Metal hook, recently broken. 100% stainless steel. See, like, how do you break... How does an android break 100% stainless steel hooks? If they're made out of plastic and aren't very strong. Which, I mean, granted, it was probably just an old cage and it was rusty and it broke that way, but, you know. Skid mark, recent. Same. Trail width, 19.6 inches. I got something 19.6 inches. Traces of galvanized steel. Reconstruct. See, like, he he just barely hit it, too. And it, it just falls off of the ceiling. He goes by. There's no reason for him to have hit it in the first place, but he did. And then... What are we looking at here? Suspect heard us enter. And then went through the ceiling. Suspect is still here. Uh-oh. Mom does when you're in first grade. So I know that he's up there, but I also... If it'll let me. Yeah. There's something that I can get behind this poster. So I'm going to rip this poster down real fast. You don't learn anything by actually scanning the poster. It's just like a little like field working poster for agriculture. Maybe I have to read it. I don't know. Okay, urban farm poster. You're not gonna let me pull it down? Because I know for a fact you pull it from that fucking corner. 
Oh. You have to stop inspecting Jesus, it. I hate these things. <laughs> oh, fun fact, too. If you take too long to find Rupert in this area, Hank just leaves. He's like, Connor, come on, we're taking too fucking long. I want to get back to the office. And then you guys just leave, and Connor fails his mission. So you're not really under, like, a time constraint for this. That's what I wanted to grab, well, too, by the way, was that book, that diary. I don't know. It looks like a note... Yeah, it's just a fun fact. God damn fucking pigeons! Hey, Rupert! What are you waiting for? Chase it! Don't mind if I do, Hank. Terminator style. God, I'm so fucking fast. You don't stand a chance, Rupert. You might as well just give up now. A standard puny android against my... articulate... prototype self? You don't stand a chance. I'm not gonna scan, because I don't care. I already know the paths that I'm gonna take. It's all the fast but risky. I don't ever go the slow route, because I just don't care that much. I'm pretty good at quick time events. Or QTEs, as the uh, gamers call them. Which half of you wouldn't know because you didn't choose console as your thing that you would bring to a deserted island. Come on, Connor. You're almost there. Oh, you almost cut him off right there. You got real close. Ooh. Right, that's, that, that's some actual Terminator shit right there. Uh, what model was the Terminator from Terminator 2? The liquid Terminator? Like the liquid metal one? That's the one that reminds me very heavily of Connor. I feel like Connor was based off of him to a certain degree. And then just given a personality. Square. I love how every time we jump, he jumps. Circle. And then we get to cut right here. X. Children of the corn type shit right here. Yeah, you would fall. Uh, we're gonna save Hank. It's because my my relationship with Hank is more important to me than catching that deviant. It's my fault. I should have been faster. You'd have caught it if it weren't for me. Yeah, I probably would have, but... That's all right. You know. We know you're old and like. slow. We'll find it. Hey, Connor. Nothing. Come on, you could have at least said thank you. Come on, say it with me. Thank you, Connor. See? Wasn't that hard, was it? Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end that episode here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like on the video. Leave a comment down below telling me what you thought. And hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. Or if you've returned for a couple of videos, just check out the channel. I'd really very much appreciate it. We just hit 50 subs on the channel so far. So that's actually really, really good. I've been at like 46 or 47 subs for like 8 months. So we're finally hitting 50 subs. It feels really nice to finally have like an even number with the big 5-0 right there. So we're still growing though, still going, still going strong. So I do want to thank you guys for 50 subscribers. I really do appreciate that very much. But one thing that I do want to say before I end it is that the reason why I like to save Hank here is because if you don't save Hank, that ruins your relationship with Hank for like the rest of the game. It's really, really, really difficult to get Hank to really start to like you again if you don't save Hank there. He doesn't die, obviously, because he has an 89% chance of survival, I'm pretty sure. He, he gets himself back up on the ledge, and you do catch the android if you choose not to go and save Hank, but the android kills itself anyways, and you don't learn anything from it. So it's literally useless. It's a useless decision that's specifically put there to just see if you will 
it, to see which path you're trying to take. If you're trying to take the more machine path and be a machine as Connor, or if you're trying to be a more sympathetic sort of leaning towards the deviant side on Connor's side. So I, I, I'm pretty sure that's what that whole situation is set up for. Which, of course, we went to the more deviant side and went for the saving Hank because I would rather Connor become a deviant for saving Hank than him become a complete machine and have like Hank hate him. So that's my that's my thought process behind that. And I just wanted to explain that. But now I'm going to end the video for real. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, stay safe. And as always, I'll see you later, guys. Peace out.